Hey everybody, welcome to Destiny Digit. So this is going to be um, an all numbers, all collective reading for today. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so in the center of the nine card box spread, we have Mary Mag Magdalene. It says she was a demon possessed woman who was delivered by Jesus and later became the first person to see the resurrected Christ. And so this is who we're talking about. This is who that this reading is about. The center card is kind of our focal point. And then we kind of spread outwards and upwards in order to kind of, you know, bring it all in. On top of Mary Magdalene, we have the Three of Swords. And so one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to look up what, what is meant by demon-possessed woman. Right? Never mind. We don't need to look it up. We got it. Um, demon possessed woman. This says that she was in her body, but she wasn't in her body alone. There was something attached to her, right? That didn't belong there. So she was who she was, but she had a passenger. And many times, many of us have passengers for good or for bad. Um, but this is a spiritual life. And our physical bodies, these are just vessels, right? They're extremely advanced. But they're advanced because they're carrying something sacred, and that's our spirit. And so when we talk about being demon-possessed, a demon, this is an entity that's dark. This is an entity that God did not intend to be within our vessel when he first created us, right? That was not the intention, but somewhere along the way, we've picked it up. On top of that, we have the Three of Swords. And so just looking at the image, you know, I love rain. Rain, it feels good. But there's a different type of energy that comes with a thunderstorm. So before we even look at the heart with the swords, we can just look at the weather conditions, right? And so Mary Magdalene, who has this this energy this passenger attached to her is going through heartbreak and the weather conditions are dark and gloomy and stormy and it doesn't look like it's going to let up you know when the rain comes down slightly slanted or sideways that means there's some force behind it right so this is a moment where like you are feeling right but it's not just feeling but like this is this there's depth so this, tar, this card talks about, you know, threes. This is three of swords. Typically, the three of swords is, um, no, three is about expansion, expression. Like this is about socializing. But on a dark day, on a stormy day with three swords in our heart, if we were to be communicating and expressing based on this image, what do you think we're feeling? What do you think it looks like, right? So this isn't a card of expression right this is the truth that we're standing in right now and when i say we i'm talking about the energy of mary magdalene and that's anybody who was chosen but also had an energy attached to them that was not chosen by god when they were created initially right so at any point in our life we are mary magdalene and when i say chosen why would i say that well it says one, she was delivered by Jesus, right? Not everybody receives delivery. Some do, some don't. So if you have, that's why I say chosen. If you know that you've been delivered of something, this is a new time for you, then you're chosen. You were chosen to know that at this time, in this place, in this space. Later, she became the first person can we talk about that somebody who once had a demon but then was chosen then was saved you know delivered i had a demon i was delivered and then i was the first person to see christ resurrected that's a journey that's a story and all of us can be in that story but it looks very different for us all so anyway that's the energy that you've been through. And so this heartbreak in the center says that healing is happening now, right? 
it's over but it's not over right like we know the storm will end right it's rain we know the rain will stop we know the sun will shine we know it won't always look like this but in this moment it doesn't feel it feels like it's going to go on forever right it this is just what it is and so Let's look to the left and then let's look to the right. To the left, we have Obatala. It says, rules the mind, keeps the peace, maintains balance, restores health. Significant colors, white, silver, purple, and then necklaces in the event you have jewelry or want to create jewelry to match. It says, all white beads. So white in general is about purity, right? It's about a cleanse. And this thunderstorm, no matter how dark it may feel, It will end, but the purpose of it was to cleanse. But sometimes the rain has to come down hard and fast and dark to cleanse the dark. Like it it has to come that way in order to remove possibly an energy that was attached to Mary Magdalene. Somebody that has chosen, that was chosen to be delivered in order to see something first, in order to get somewhere first in order to be the first, right? So think about where you are. Think about your bubble of people, places, and things. What is it that you're going through that nobody else is going through, right? What is it that you were delivered from that nobody else has been delivered from, right? Or where have you been delivered to consciously where others may not have yet arrived? Um, And so the reason why this time is so significant is because of what's to come. We can't see our whole story at one time, right? We just can't see it. But there's something that's supposed to come. You're supposed to do something, see something, or be somewhere first. And so anything that you have to separate from, anything that has contributed to this stormy day with the three swords in the heart, it was a quick cleanse. It was a deep cleanse. It was a dark cleanse, right? This is a card of heartbreak, loss, and betrayal. But it had to be quick because you have something to do. You have somewhere to go. Uh, and I mean spiritually. I mean, there's something, you know, it's, you're not done. And so this kind of looks like, to me, goodbye demon. Delivery is here. There's something you have to do later or soon in life. But we may not always understand that when this happens. And so that's when the heartbreak and loss comes from. But when we experience loss on our journey, it's because it wasn't supposed to be there. Right? And even something good may need to end because energetically it may not be good for us. Right? Everything doesn't have to be you know, the devil himself. But sometimes things can be that to us because they're just not aligned they're just not that's not where they're supposed to be that's not who's supposed to be in that space that's not what you're supposed to be doing you know what i mean um all of those things can be possessions they can be attachments they can be passengers in our vessel that need to go so albatala is an arisha and it's and he's here in order to um in order to to, to bring us something new. You know, the Ace of Cups is new love. It's a new beginning in love. So there's something that needs to get dropped in our cup that is going to overflow. It's going to create an overflow, right? So here we, we talk about purity. We talk about white. So on the image, it's the all white bird that's bringing something and they're dropping it in the cup. And when that happens, the water overflows in abundance, right? But this is in the heart space. And so sometimes in order to make room for this new beginning, we have to deal with the things that have hurt us, caused loss, grief, betrayal. Now followed, we have seven of pentacles and being kidnapped. And so... Seven, let's just talk about that. You know, seven is a number of analyzing. It's about thinking. It's being rational. This is one of the most knowledgeable numbers when we're talking about, you know, those that carry this energy dominantly. Um, This is the, the seeker, right? This is someone that has information because they value it. They eat, sleep, drink, breathe knowledge they want to be informed they want to know and in order to do that you have to pull away 
and kind of be your own teacher at times, right? You have to be comfortable being in your own space with just you. A lot of seven's existence is taking place within them, within their vessel, personally, privately, with God and, and them. That's how it's happening. And so when this, when he's looking at his pentacles, he's looking at his harvest, but only one, one pentacle has dropped. Only one has ripened. And so this is thinking like, okay, like, uh, is, was, was, was it worth it? Did I plant the seeds appropriately? Why aren't they dropping? Why aren't they harvesting? Why aren't they ripening? Um, and so this is reflecting, but the fact that you're even looking at a potential harvest is a reason to celebrate, right? Like the fact that you're even looking at six still attached, something's attached that totally could just be a little plot of soil but but it's something but it's not time and so this is a card of patience this is a card of of needing to trust in what you've already done even if you've only seen one little pentacle arrive okay now the card under that is being kidnapped so in the handmade deck anything written in red is a trauma that humans can face right and so if this is a story of you or someone you know this is a real trauma that can happen to to us and if it doesn't happen physically tr remember this is a spiritual life this can happen spiritually so being kidnapped means to be taken against your will now we spoke earlier about even things that are good or appear good can 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 take from us cannot give to us cannot be for us cannot be aligned with us right and so i am feeling that this definitely is talking about spiritually being kidnapped parts of us being you know when we carry a passenger that we may not have chosen that passenger when we talk about mary magdalene being demon possessed we may not have chosen that you know and so part of our vessel part of our life part of our existence part of our space we have been kidnapped by another by something that wasn't for us it was against us you know what i mean and 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 so that's a real trauma whether it happened physically or spiritually or emotionally i hope i'm kind of making sense about how i'm interpreting that um and so listen the seven of pentacles on top of this is saying you the recovery has begun right you've gone through what you've needed to go through and if it's still happening then be conscious that it's supposed to stop right this storm will stop um but this is a card of patience what comes after the seven of pentacles is the eight of pentacles and that's about mastery so at some point you will no longer have to worry about if it worked about if you will see profit, about if you'll see gain, about if you made the right decision, about you, at some point you won't have to be standing in your field, right? On the Eight of Pentacles, it's a character that's sitting and well, in the traditional deck, he's sitting and they're banging out pentacles, right? By hand, by hand, they are hammering out pentacles. And then above him, there are pentacles on the wall to say, this is, you know, this is my work. Um, this is what I have to show for myself. So eight is about hard work and diligence and power, right? It's about, it's about mastering something. And so this will progress. At some point you will realize that you have learned to master when your energy is being kidnapped, right? You've, you've dealt with this. And right now you're questioning if you've made the right choices, if you've sorted through things correctly, like you're trying to figure out if you trust yourself. If you, if, if you are harvesting and planting in the right way. And so to know what comes next is the eight. I feel like at some point you'll start to see your work reflected back to you in the physical sense. Okay. So the Orishas. I, 
that this card is this deck that uh, the handmade deck is almost 200 cards and so twice we have the same orisha so we talked about significant colors we talked about necklaces in the event that you hand make jewelry or have jewelry or have something all white to kind of tap in in order to balance your mind your peace restoring health that's the space that we're in and sometimes it doesn't look like a lot of movement but with but within us there is a lot of movement okay um and so twice the same orisha comes out in almost 200 cards so this is this is significant with with the three of swords that's about communication it's about clarity it's about our mind and so the presence of obatala two times says that this energy this assistance this guidance this spirit is here for you right this is this is exactly what needs to be done um, on this card, objects associated with Obatala, all white substances, silver and platinum, foods, specific favorite foods for Obatala, pears, coconut, black eyed peas. So these are things that you can eat to tap in to accept the energy. These are things that can be placed on your altar to, to honor what's available to you as you move through this time. And so the six of the six of of wands that comes above the heartbreak. Remember we talked about that storm would end. It's not always going to be raining sideways and dark and it's not always going to be like that. You're not always going to have to use your energy to mourn yourself, right? It's not like that. At some point you'll be able to celebrate. And above that is literally celebration and success. And this is about others seeing you you're on a horse right you're on a horse you're elevated you're up and so you're you're higher than those next to you um and so this means that there's a lot of people beneath seeing this but also the way in which they're seeing you is there's the, almost like a pedestal a moment of of being the only one the only successor there can only be one winner and so we all have those moments in life and so the beautiful thing is that that comes after the healing right that comes right above now to the left of that it says star go forth life purpose inspiration you're on the right path and that's paired with the nine of pentacles so listen you know the the top row talks about where we're going the middle row is kind of where we are and the bottom row is just telling a story that that can happen subconsciously or something that's hidden from us that is kind of like propelling this whole thing but nonetheless the healing the 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 opportunity to put something in your cup but but you have to separate from something else there had to be a loss something had to be taken away a passenger had to get out of your vehicle right and trusting that you did the right thing because something was being removed from you without your will or you were being taken from something without your your will involved and so the nine of pentacles and uh, the star saying go forth this literally is saying that whatever this is is not for nothing this is a part of what's to come next and nine of pentacles is being independent being able to you know you went from the seven planting harvesting and then the eight i described as mastery having something to show and then nine is like i'm supporting myself i'm doing this right all on my my life purpose i'm on my path no one else's and any and 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 when things have to be taken from your path it's because they're not supposed to it's your purpose it's your purpose okay it's your purpose and so this is about learning and seeing what you can do with you for you um this is about seeing what you're made of when you're when you're moving in the right direction and when you're totally in alignment and so you are a star and so this star this card says go forth right um victory is yours so to the right we have the eyes discern the beauty but not the kindness of a person mm. And so let's think. We have the King of Swords. And so this is someone that can see through the BS, right? They can see. They're not afraid to say what they see. They're no nonsense. They will say it. Um, and they don't have a problem using that sword. In the image, you know, the character's at rest. 
but always willing and ready to work. They always knowing that there's more, there more BS is always going to come. It's never going to just end. Right. And I say that because the, even though it doesn't seem to be clouds in front of him, but behind him are clouds. And so his sword is up because he's prepared to find truth, speak truth, be discerning and know that things are not always as they seem. And so I think that, I think that one of the reasons that you have to go through your energy being taken or, or you have to go through the wrong things is that so you can gain a level of discernment because something can look so good. It can be so enticing, but it doesn't reveal to you what's at the core. And I'm talking about people, places, and things. There could be a beautiful home on the outside, but it's falling apart day by day on the inside. And that can be physically the structure of the home is just dilapidated or the relationships of the people in the home. And so discernment allows you to see beneath the surface, right? And so anything that has been lost or anything that had to go, it's because at some point there was a level of truth that you needed to trust and see through. And then you had to use your sword when it was time. And so discernment gives you a sword. That is a gift. Discernment is a gift. It allows you to see beneath the surface, no matter what the outside is showing you. And that's talking about people, places, and things. Um, and so there's a level of success. You, you have done this in some way. Now, just looking, let's talk, before we talk about the bottom row, let's talk about the cards that came on the bottom of each deck. We have High Priestess, and then it says peace is costly, but it's worth the expense. And though the High Priestess is an energy that just knows, right? They've got all the clairs. They just know. In many different ways they know. And they're not concerned with, with finding out how they know. They're not about to lead a whole investigation, but they're gonna honor and trust what they know. And then that's another level of the gift of discernment. And so maybe your peace was being kidnapped in some kind of way, right? Maybe you didn't have peace and you had to figure out what, where is this passenger? I'm supposed to get somewhere first. I'm supposed to be doing something, but I have a passenger. Who is taking my peace? And the King of Swords says that you've learned how to use the sword. You've learned how to discern what appeared to bring peace, but really didn't leave you that way. It wasn't what it seemed. So it's costly, but what you have to spend to get it is absolutely worth it. Okay. So what peace do you desire? What peace are you missing? What peace are you longing for? And intuitively, psychically, what do you know you have to do that you don't know why you know you have to do it but you have to do it that was a lot but I hope you understood right what do you know you know without knowing how you know it how do you know that and then what are you willing to do about it how far are you willing to go for your peace for your comfort for your sanity all right now let's get on the bottom row and so my deck also has biblical characters. So I have Orishas, I have runes, I have African proverbs, I have traumas that humans face, and then I have biblical characters. Biblical characters are significant because we don't know each other, right? We're anybody on this channel. We've been in all different countries, all different homes, languages, cultures. But I'm willing to bet that many of us have crossed paths with some form of organized religion or spiritual system, being Christianity, being Islam, being, um, sorry, car is passing by. Um, if we were Jewish, right, we've all crossed paths with, with, with something that said, if we believe this, we live this way. And so I'm hoping that through the biblical characters, one, we can put ourselves in the shoes of another and try to understand the energy that's being presented to us. But also we can connect with one another through a, short, a story that we know. Right. And so I use that for us to step in the shoes of the person, but not to push an approach. Um, and so beneath the three of swords. Right. We have Nicodemus. So it says he was a well-known Pharisees and teacher. He was led to Christ during a midnight visit with the Savior. 
and who would later help prepare his crucified body for burial. All right, so this is a layered relationship um, between, that's a lot for one person, right? But so the events of Nicodemus matter in relation to Christ. Christ is also the first person, Christ is also seen by Mary Magdalene first, okay? And so when resurrected, after the fact, um, and so Nicodemus was before. So we have an a before and then we have an after. Um, when we're talking about the purpose, the role that Mary Magdalene had to play. And when we talk about Christ, Jesus Christ, I'm thinking of it in terms or the energy that I'm talking about. First of all, anything that's here has always been here. Like ain't nothing leaving earth. There's nothing new. It's just, it's just going around and around. And we're eating it differently depending on the year, the generation and what we're being told or put into, right? Like, it's not that hard to figure out. But anyway, we have a role to play. And so there is a spirit that is living in us and through us and around us. And it played a role for Nicodemus and it played a role for Mary Magdalene. And so we're talking about the Holy Spirit, right? That moved through Jesus Christ. And so that same spirit is here and it moves through us because we are, we are characters. Somebody can write a story about us one day, right? And so the way Nicodemus interacted with it, think about the way Mary Magdalene is interacting with it. Um, so the fact that Nic Nicodemus was a Pharisee means that like he was more part of um, like an organization that had a structure and beliefs and a way of doing things. And you, they, they had boxes, right? And everything fit in a box. And when it was in a box, it made sense to them. Right. And so when they present people with whatever they believe, they give them a box and say, this is what we believe. Stay in this box. But Christ didn't fit in that box. Right. And so there was trouble in between those that gave out boxes for telling people how to be, what to think, how to feel. Christ rubbed them the wrong way. And so, listen, the crucifixion was about not being able to be put in a box. And I'm, I'm watering it down because we all walk through these moments, right? We all walk through these things um, where we, we're just not fitting into something. And it can feel like we're being crucified for it throughout our life. And so that's that spirit that runs through everybody at all times, everywhere, that allows us to connect. And so anyway... Nicodemus was on one side, but he ended up preparing, preparing the body of Christ before burial. Isn't that significant to be a part of this is like having one foot on one side and one foot on the other, like sitting on the fence, right? Not really being able to fall left or to fall right, but sitting on the fence and having a vision of both sides. This kind of reminds me of that hierophant energy, right? Tradition. And sometimes tradition, um, it, it can look and feel like a box. That's, that's just the energy I'm getting. It can look and feel like a box. And so for Nicodemus to come beneath Mary Magdalene, we're talking about, you know, why was she delivered? Why was she able? She had a demon with her, right? A demon-possessed woman. She had a demon with her. But why was she able to be the first one? to see Christ. Nicodemus was one of the last ones because he prepared. And I feel like if you're not willing to get out of the box totally, then you're never going to be first in anything. Truly, truly. I'm not talking about the material world. I'm talking about the spiritual world, right? And so Nicodemus, this I see that this is a fence sitter. You know, he got to play a significant role, but he wasn't able to be first. He wasn't able to be first. And so no matter where you are now, no matter what has happened, no matter what passengers you've carried, delivery is here. It, it, you always have the ability, but you have to get off of the fence, right? In order to be the first person. And I don't literally mean, you know what I mean by being first, right? I mean, by gaining position, by gaining a seat at the table, you had to have you know, agreed to go to dinner. And that's what Nicodemus didn't do. So the 10 of wands comes out with that. And this is about carrying a burden. 
right? That's heavy. Them 10 wands, that's heavy. Look at that. It's heavy. But if we look, we have 10 of wands, three of swords, six of wands. So this healing, this heartbreak got rid of four wands, four wands. Four is about stability and structure and foundation. And so through this purging, through loss and grief and whatever these broken heart moments have been, you were able to remove the passenger that stopped you from getting to your victory, your moment of success. And so what you weren't able to once release yourself of, these burdens, that's what Ten of Wands talked about, burdens, right? And so carrying burdens sometimes keeps us in pain. And then when they're released, when we are freed from them, when we have made space for new love, for new beginnings, then the victory comes in. But we had to gain discernment because why did we think that all those Ten Wands were worth carrying? Why couldn't we see that it was too heavy? You know, why haven't we put them down yet? I mean, obviously this person is going to put them down, but we don't know. Is it going to be in a day? Is it going to be in a week? Is it going to be in three years? You don't know when they're going to put this down. So how long were we willing to sit on this fence and not make a move? Right? To the left of that, we have chariot chariots on top of Zechariah's so chariot is literally it can be a literal vehicle right this can be a vehicle it can be something that's about to move you quickly from one place to the next this could be spirit coming through right this is like the this the uber of spirit where things about are about to take off and progress and change very fast on top of, or no, with the chariot, we have Zechariah. It says he was a priest visited by Archangel Gabriel, who predicted his barren wife would present him a son, John the Baptist. Okay, listen, so chariot's about moving fast. But, okay, so I talked about free readings. So if you're still here, you are part of a free reading. I'm going to read this card again. And I want you to tell me two things in the comments in order to be put in a raffle for the free reading. It says, Zacharias, he was a priest visited by Angel Gabriel who predicted his wife would bear a son, John the Baptist. We've talked about four people right there. The only name we don't know, and I hope I haven't said it, is the wife. What is the name of the wife and how old was the wife when she was no longer barren and supernaturally became pregnant? You know, a, a miracle happened, something that happened to defy science. She became pregnant and birthed John the Baptist. What was the name of the wife and how old was she? And if you can't find age, say why. Um, so if you can answer that, put the answer in the comment section. I will take the names, make a little video of me with all the names, um, and I'll pull one and they will get a free reading. Um, and so, yeah, let's give this a try. Okay. What was the name of Zacharias' wife? How old was she when she gave birth to John the Baptist? John the Baptist is the guy who delivered who announced Jesus, like saw him. We we're talking about the gift of discernment, knew who Christ was, immediately said it, and then baptized him, right? Um, and so the way in which John the Baptist appeared, it was through a woman that had been barren, had, could never have children. But the, but, the, but the angel comes to you, Zacharias, and says, hey, your wife's about to have a son. Why didn't the angel go to the wife? Why did the angel go to Zacharias? Did the wife already know to have faith in God, but maybe Zacharias didn't? And so that's why the angel appeared to say, hey, something's about to happen that you never believed was going to happen. It's not going to make sense, but it has to happen, right? We're talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist had to be here. And you're a part of the environment in which he will be groomed in, raised in, right? And so we're coming to you to prepare you for what won't make sense, but it had to happen. 
So get in the chariot, Zacharias, right? Get on board with what's about to take place. And so whatever, you know, in your life, remember, we're using characters to get in the to try to get in the energies. If you're Zacharias and an angel were to come to you and tell you something that you wouldn't believe, what would that be? What would the chariot be for you if a chariot pulled up in front? And you could get on it. And if it could take you to your life purpose, if it could take you anywhere, what's inspiring you? Where would it take you? And so listen, being able to get in this chariot allows you to drop anything that kept you in the box and that kept you from your own victory and own success. Okay? That 10 of wands. Once you put them down, once you free yourself, you're choosing a side, right? You're, you're moving into your purpose and that's the purpose of God, the Holy Spirit. That's, that's that purpose. And everybody has them, but everybody doesn't show up to dinner to be delivered and to have a seat at the table. Uh, to the right of Nicodemus, we have PTSD. Um, remember the red cards talk about traumas that humans face. We have PTSD, anxiety, flashbacks, persistent memories, avoidance. And so, listen, we don't have to be actively live, going through the trauma to still feel like we are traumatized. And so PTSD talks about the fact that whatever traumatized you has stopped, but your body doesn't live as if it has stopped. And when your body doesn't live like the trauma has ended, that looks like having anxiety you know, about life, about adulting, about just no, having anxiety about what's to come next because it feels as if the trauma is still there. It's not done. It hasn't ended. Flashbacks, you don't have, it, it, something could have happened years ago, months ago, weeks ago, doesn't matter, but it can still feel within your body like it is now. It is in the present moment. And a flashback at any time can take you to that moment, even if you're decades outside of it. Persistent memories means that something is living rent free in your mind and it won't stop. And remember, if something is, we can't make room for the new if we if we are allowing things to live in us, right? Those are memories, persistent memories where you can smell, taste, feel. It is so vivid. It is so clear, right? But that's using vital space. That's using vital space that we need. And it's keeping us in the environment of trauma, even if we're nowhere near it, even if we've been far removed. And then we have avoidance, not wanting to do life. Life is going to life with or without us. But this is us knowing that, but not wanting to do it, not showing up to it, avoiding the inevitable again because of fear of what's to come next. If we're always receiving something, we, we, it's hard to imagine a chariot arriving, right? Zacharias, like some of us need to have a whole angel drop down in front of us to know that it has ended. Right. And so that's that's P that's PTSD. And then the sun card comes out with that saying, you know, it's here. It's here. Um, the sun is about enlightenment. So when we say it's here, I'm talking, yes, it's a card of happiness and success. But but you have to see it. You have to see it to know it. Right. You. The, the sun has a way of shining through all the darkness and whatever that feels like is not always comfortable, but it can seep through if we're willing to open our eyes and see it. And so I feel like this could talk about, you know, sometimes we're willing to carry passengers, people, places and things because we've always carried it. Right. Or because we never felt like we could see something, have something, be something different. And so we're living in the environment of trauma, even though we're in a whole new space with a whole new possibility, right? But our energy has been kidnapped so much that we don't know that. And so this loss, this, this, this demon being removed, this delivery, this is in order to get you where you need to go first. And that first is your, pur your purpose. So when I say first, you're the only one that's going to show up. It's your purpose. Nobody else shares the same purpose as you.
that's important to know. And so the opinions of others really don't matter because it is yours. It is the way spirit has shown up in your life. And it can only look like how it has shown up in your life because you're you. So in order to be in purpose, to follow an inspiration faithfully, you have to intuitively discern the people, places, and things that are keeping you in trauma, that are keeping you from seeing that you haven't moved anywhere, right? Spirit's here for you, but it's like sitting on a fence, still believing and practicing this way, but, but, but having... But having the, but seeing the other side, but not really knowing why you can't go to the other side, right? Anxiety. And so the sun card comes out. It's a card of enlightenment. Things are illuminated. Being able to see something now. And so this could, having awareness about what kept you kidnapped and why you were not able to discern things as you were supposed to. Right? This is why we carry so much. This is why we carry more than we have to. And so I feel like just like Angel Gabriel showed up to Zacharias, I feel like the chariot says there's going to be a moment where something is just given to you and it will make sense. You will see how you have not been putting down the burdens, listening to what's being revealed, seeing what's being revealed to you, right? You've been in this Nicodemus phase where you're stuck in one thing, but you have a very significant role to play in the other thing in the other side right and so at one point it was like you were with God but but you couldn't you know Mary Magdalene who would you rather be Nicodemus or Mary Magdalene right do you want to prepare the body for burial or do you want to be the first to see the resurrection And if you want to be the first to see the resurrection, it doesn't matter if you have a demon. The whole world will chastise you because you have demons. Everybody's got them. It wasn't about the demon. It was never about the demon, the habit, the behavior, the addiction, the relationship, the perceived failures. It was never those things. It was about whether or not you were willing to show up to dinner. Are you getting dressed to go to this dinner so that you can be delivered and have a seat at the table? That's what it was about. It wasn't about the demon, right? Mary Magdalene? Yeah, she had demons. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? But she got dressed. She went to dinner. She had a seat at the table. And now she's first, right? And so whatever, whatever has kept you in a, in a habitual state of pain and grief and sadness, whatever cycle has kept you there or lived in that space, it's gone or it's being removed or it needs to be healed from in order for you to gain what you were supposed to gain from it. And that is discernment. Um, in order to see, you have to go through dark places, go, do dark things. You know, it's, it's a part of being able to carry the sword like this King of Swords does. And then for the high priestess to come out at the bottom, well, there it is, right? Having knowledge and never needing to open a book, but having all the knowledge that's inside two books, right? You just know because you know, because it's the gift. But the gift is an accessible when something is kidnapping your peace, which is why discernment must be used to remove no matter how much it costs, right? Your peace is worth it. Okay, I'm hoping this reading was helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.